In this lesson, we'll cover setting up a render farm job for MentalRay. So, first things first, I want to go over to my rendering menu set, and under render, go to create backburner job. So, backburner is the software that runs the render farm. We'll cover more of that later. But for now, I'm just going to go through and start setting this up. So first off, for the job name, I'm going to leave it as the uh, scene file name, since we've got all the information, whether it's a shock cam, mid-angle, mentor ray, render, in that scene file. However, at the beginning of this, I want to add my last name, just so that we designate it as one of my files. Since all the files get pulled into the same uh, computer, they want to make sure that we have them designated out by student name, just so that it's easier to go through and correct errors later. So under the description, I'm also going to just go ahead and designate it as a mental ray rendering tests for render farm demo. Okay, so uh, under the job name, you generally want to follow the standard Maya procedure of not having any spaces or unusual characters like dollar signs, hyphens, stuff like that. The description, however, is free range. You can add spaces and whatever you want to there just to designate and describe what the scene is. So uh, next we've got our priority. This you want to leave at 50. Please do not change this without express interest from myself or Rebecca. Just leave it at 50. Uh, this changes uh, what the of course the, what the priority is in the render farm. So um, if it's set to zero, it's going to be rendered first. If it's 100, it's going to be suspended, as you can see by hov hovering over it. Just leave it at 50. It makes our lives so much easier, and it will not annoy the rest of your classmates when you try to bump them up on the farm. Leave it at 50, and as first come first serve, everything is wonderful. So for the start and end frame, this normally does get imported from your render settings properly, but just in case, go ahead and make sure that it is starting at the first frame of your sequence and ending at the last frame. Task size. So uh, the task size is how many frames are going to be rendered per task <laughs> of uh, a render job. Basically what this means is that each task is designated out to each computer on the render farm. So it goes to the render farm, asks for a job, or a task, and it gets sent a task. Uh, and it then goes through and renders however many frames are in that task size. In order to do this, it goes through and opens up the files on the farm, downloads all the information, renders the scenes, and then closes that file again, just to make sure that it doesn't catch any bad data along the way between different tasks. Good for the computers, not so good for us, because opening the scene takes extra time and adds to our render times. So, best uh, rule of thumb is to make sure that your task size is appropriate to how long your render times are as well as how long your opening times are. Uh, best rule of process is then that for very short render times like 10 seconds, 30 seconds, you'll want a larger task size so it's able to get more frames out before needing to reopen. Generally this is going to be about 10 to 15 frames per task. For something that has a longer render time though, like 10 minutes, 30 minutes, or an hour, you want to use a smaller task size so that it's able to more evenly distribute frames between all the computers based on their power distribution and render ring opening times. So for something that's like 10 minutes or 30 minutes, I'd use about two to three tasks per, uh, two to three frames per task, excuse me. But for something that's rendering like an hour, we'll have to do something very special for that. And you generally want to have a task size of one just because, again, smaller computers take longer to render those, bigger computers can do it faster, so you want to make sure that all the frames get distributed evenly. Wonderful. So, next we've got our renderer. Since this is going to be a mental ray render, I'm going to want to go through and designate it as the mental ray render. Generally, you can go from the scene file, better to just explicitly say what you want to be using. Under these additional options for mental ray, there are two flags that we want to add to make sure that it's using all the resources available to each computer. This is going to be dash art to say that it should be using all the render threads on each of the computers, using all the processors, and dash AML. Uh, AML is all memory limits, essentially saying that use all the memory that's available to these computers. Otherwise, it'll limit it down so that it's not using too much of any computer at any given point in time, but the farm's set up to be able to allow for this, so just use all available threads and all available memory. Under the manager name now, uh, we want to make sure that this is set to bhclab underscore zero zero. This is the name of the computer that manages the farm. 
port number, leave a default server list, leave a default server group, leave a default. And just for my purposes here, I'm going to go ahead and click manually start job. Normally you want to leave this off just so that it starts automatically, but I'm going to be showing you stuff in a moment, so I'm going to turn that on. Okay. Um, one other thing, if you have extortionate render times, is this use custom command. This allows you to go through and add extra information as well that you might need to use in order to be able to get a full render. Uh, I'm going to minimize this a second. So under here, I'm going to hit populate command, and this is going to load all the script that is going to be applied to my render. If we have a very long render time, we're going to want to go through and change the timeout time for the render. Essentially, uh, Backburner says that if a frame is taking, or a task, excuse me, is taking more than an hour to render, it's probably got an error in it and it should be killed. We don't want this for very long render times, so we can go ahead and override this by in this populate command after priority, go ahead and hit hyphen, timeouts, and this is a minute, so I'm going to say like 120. I've got a very fast render time, so I don't need to actually say this, but just for demonstration purposes, going to go ahead and designate that as one of my flags, just to make sure that it doesn't time out after an hour. So. Uh, that is pretty much all the settings for a Mentoray job. Just going to go ahead and say submit job and close. And it's off. So we'll go over to our back render tab after th in two lessons after I go over the Maya software render settings. But for now, that's sitting up on the farm and ready to go. See you in the next lesson.